chapter one purity lexically the word tahara means cleaning and being free from impurity as a technical term it means lifting spiritual impurity and removing physical impurity water and its various categories all water that falls from the sky or comes from the earth is pure as Allah has said we send down purifying water from the sky also the prophet said about the water in the ocean its water is pure and its animals that have died are permissible to eat furthermore the prophet also said about well water verily water is pure and nothing makes it impure thus it remains in a state of purity even if someone pure mixes with it as long as it still considered water for example the prophet told the woman who were preparing his daughter for <coughs> for burial wash her three five or more times as you see fit wash her with water mixed with lotus leaves and make the last one with camphor or with some camphor water would not be considered impure if it's if even if something impure should mix with it unless the pure unless the pu impurity changes its quality this is based on the hadith of abu said who narrated it was said to the messenger of allah shall we make ablution from the well of buddha buddha this is the well in which the filth of menstruating woman dogs and putrid things were thrown the prophet replied verily water is pure and purifying and nothing makes it impure impurities in arabic the word for impurity is najasha najasha it refers to any everything that is repulsive to people of sound nature they protect themselves from such things and they wash their garments whenever such things fall upon them thus such things include filth urine and so forth the principal ruling concerning any kind of matter is that of permissibility and purity that is they are to be considered permissible and pure unless proven otherwise if something if someone therefore claims that an object is impure then the burden of proof is upon him to bring forth some evidence for the impurity of that object if he does his conclusion will be followed if he is not able to bring forth such proof or if he does not present an acceptable proof then our judgment will be according to the original principle and it being free of any impurity since declaring something to be impure is an obligation that concerns all people it is not permissible to make such a declaration unless a proof has been established for it those items for which there is proof that they are impure include the following one and two human urine and feces as for feces its impurity is proven by the hadith by abu that the messenger of allah said if one of you steps with his sandals into something filthy, Allah, then dirt 
is the purification for it, refers to everything that harms someone, such as impure things, filth, rocks and thorns. Its meaning in this particular hadith, though as is clear, is impurities. Concerning urine, there is the hadith narrated by Anas in which a Bedouin was urinating in the mosque and the people got up to stop him. The messenger of Allah then said, Leave him and do not cut him off from his act. Anas continued to narrate and continued by narrating that when he had finished urinating, the Prophet asked for a container of water to pour over the urine. Purity 3 and 4 Al Mahdi and Al Wadi. The Mahdi is a thin, clear, sticky food that is produced during amoral stimulation, but it does not come out like an ejaculation or gush out, and it also does not cause any type of exhaustion afterwards. In fact, a person may not even realize that he has excreted it. It occurs both for man and woman. It is impure, thus the Prophet ordered that the private part should be washed due to it. I was a person who would have Mahdi come out often, but I was too shy to ask the Prophet about it due to my relationship with his daughter. Thus, I requested al Miqdar to ask him. He did, and the Prophet said he should wash his private part and make ablution. al wadi is a white thick fluid that comes out after urination, usually due to an infection or something of that nature. It is also impure. There is semen, and uh, as for semen, it is the thing due to which one must make ghusl. As for Wadi and Al Mahdi, that he said, Wash your private part, or he said, Private parts, and make the ablution like that for the prayer. Dung of animals that cannot be eaten. The Messenger of Allah went to relieve himself and said, Bring me three stones. I brought him two stones and a piece of dung. He took he took the two stones and discarded the dung, saying, It is filth. Menstrual blood stated that a woman came to the Prophet and said, We get menstrual blood. Or out on our clothing. So what should we do? He replied, rub it, then scratch it off with water, and then wet it, and then you can pray in it. Dog saliva narrated that the messenger of Allah said, the purifying of one of your bowels that a dog licked, bowls that your dog licked, it in is for it to be what seven times. The first time being with dirt. Carrion, the ref this refers to the animal that has died without being slaughtered in the legally sanctioned manner. The Prophet said, if the pelt is tanned, it becomes pure. The exceptions for the skin of pel or pelt of carrion being impure are the following. Dead fish and locusts are considered pure. This is based on the Hadith from Ibn Umar, who said that the Prophet said two types of dead animals and two types of blood have been made permissible for us. The two dead animals are fish and locusts, the two types of blood are the liver and the spleen.